Kingdom Come Deliverance, for those of you who might not know, is an open-world medieval RPG that starts you on the bottom rung in a way I don't think I've experienced since learning to read and write my own name. Which comes to mind because one of the many skills you must spend in-game time learning in KCD is reading. Yep, your character cannot read when the game begins. Warhorse Studios have gone for a whole new level of realism in the medieval RPG genre, and what's more real than a common blacksmith's son whom no one outside his tiny village either knows or cares about? No golden child, no beam of light overhead, no legendary witcher, dragon hunter, or forgotten young wizard under the stairs. Henry of Scalitz is just an ordinary young boy who can barely even lift the sword his father has just finished making for a local nobleman, much less swing it when the game begins. You still have a lot to learn. He would probably live out the rest of his presumably fairly short life in complete obscurity in the same little village where he was born, if history hadn't just ridden through it with a thousand of its angriest soldiers and burned it to the ground. I say history because this game is steeped in it. Its places are real places. Many of its characters were real people, or in some cases loosely based on real people at least, and many of the events you will live through as Henry of Scalitz were taken right out of the pages of the Czech Republic's long and brutal history. Silver Scalitz, where the game begins, really was burned to the ground by the invading forces of Sigismund of Hungary on March 23rd, 1403. Unfortunately, that is the very day Warhorse Studios give you control of the luckless Henry and his unremarkable frame. So your village is burning, your parents and friends have been murdered, and those same murderers are making their way up the hill towards you. Henry can't read, he knows nothing of warfare, he can barely lift a sword or stay on a horse, which is precisely why the first real mission in this game is called Run. If I'm being completely honest, Henry is so useless at this early stage that it took me three attempts to even run away without getting killed. So you can believe me when I tell you that even basic skills in this game really feel earned. Swords really feel sort of heavy until you get the hang of them after intensive training, and you must train intensively if you want to master any of the skills in Kingdom Come Deliverance, particularly weaponry. Arrows you fire will nosedive after a few feet at first, not that it matters, because there is no aiming reticle for archery, so you'll be lucky to hit a bunny with an arrow even if you get close enough to push them through its fluffy little face. If you don't believe me, check out the video of me trying to hunt hares on day three of my first playthrough Kingdom Come Deliverance. I'll put the link in the description below. Well, that was awful. I didn't imagine a village yokel like you would have much skill, but you failed to meet even my low expectations. Even Henry's speech options are noticeably poorer at the beginning, lacking the finesse in the early stages to respond to tough questions with anything more witty than, yeah, well, you smell, so there. To be perfectly honest, I'm hesitant to say it feels like learning to walk for fear that Warhorse Studios will make you learn to do that in the next game. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if psychologists ten years from now are prescribing medication for those of us console players who were emotionally scarred by KCD's early lockpicking mechanic and were never really the same again. One of the very early patches for this game tweaked the console lockpick problem just enough to keep you from losing your mind completely but even the improved version squeezed you so hard against the fragile glass wall of sanity that you could hear it cracking and your first fevered instinct was to lick it better. What? Maybe that last part was just me. But the fact remains, if you weren't a die-hard RPG fanatic, an OCD sufferer, or just so damn stubborn you were determined to get your £50 worth of it killed you and everyone else in your building, you might have given up at this point. FPS players probably tuned out the moment they found out they wouldn't get to kill anything at all for at least an hour. What? The pickpocketing mechanic was confusing and difficult, sneaking without getting caught virtually impossible in the early stages, the list goes on. Suffice it to say, Kingdom Come Deliverance does not hold your hand. Just don't get in anyone's way. Don't go too far and come back here when you're done. Many things you just have to figure out for yourself. 
I spent more time in jail than out of it during the first few days because no one mentioned that I had to have a torch lit when walking around towns at night. I honestly didn't realise that a skill tree existed for the first three days of play. But the elation I felt once I figured out there were perk points to spend on improving your skills was almost like the day I passed my driving test. Not a peep to anyone. What all of this staggering around in the dark does for you is to help you really become Henry of Scarlet. To identify with this lost and bewildered character in a way I have never before experienced in a video game. Your hunger levels rise slowly and you have to figure out how to feed yourself without stealing, or at least without getting caught stealing. Although, as you'll quickly learn, there is a suspicious-looking orange goo, which sits bubbling away in every kitchen and in every campfire in a large pot all across this area of Bohemia. Where it comes from, I have no idea, best not to ask, but nobody seems to mind when you eat it, so go right ahead. You become tired, and your stamina and health levels begin to drop, unless you can find somewhere to sleep. I was also thrown in jail for sleeping in the wrong place fairly on in the game. You even need to wash yourself and have your clothes laundered from time to time so that people don't turn their noses up at you in dialogue. Though you'd be better off going for a good scrub. You stink like a badger. As the game progresses, though, these things that seemed overwhelming at first become second nature, like so many things in real life, and you feel like a real part of this living, breathing, beautiful world that Warhorse have created in such incredible detail. Occasionally, their attempts at natural behaviour in NPCs are inconsistent and miss the mark by some way. In another video, I'll link in the description below, I was attacked with a sword for forgetting to return a holy relic, and only moments later, the same guard put away his sword and said, God be with you, before answering all my questions about who lived in the house he was guarding. Is this where Comrade Keyser lived? But these moments pale into insignificance when compared with the brilliance of some of the relationships that develop between characters in the game. I can't mention most of them for fear of story spoilers, but there is one which begins to develop early on in the game between Henry and spoiled young nobleman Sir Hans Capon. When we first meet young Sir Hans, he's the archetypal young medieval lord. Arrogant, spoiled, selfish, intolerant of anyone beneath him. You immediately dislike him, and I was certain he was going to meet his end at the point of my sword. But Kingdom Come Deliverance often swerves around tired video game tropes at the last second, veering off into the woodland of unpredictability, watching hedgehogs bounce off the windscreen and into your dust like the uncomfortable, spiky, curled-up clichés that they are. What are you blabbering on about? Yes, I know, I took that metaphor way too far. Enough. The point is that this game does not always do what is expected and it feels fresher for it. At an early point in the game, a situation which both you and young Sir Hans have been bullied into by the stand-in Lord of Ratai, sparks a chain of events that completely changes how Henry and Hans view one another. Is that so? And theirs becomes the most natural friendship I think I've ever encountered in a video game. So much so, that I was a bit disappointed I couldn't spend more time hanging out with him than I did. So, next time you try to tell me I can't kill a boar with an arrow, you can... He's just one of those guys who's fun to hang out with, but doesn't always seem to realise when a situation calls for a more grown-up response. Oh, balls! <laughs> you quite often find yourself rolling your eyes or doing a facepalm moment and going, No! as he says the wrong thing or does something that you know full well is going to end up in one or the other of you getting seriously injured or killed. <laughs> other revelations are at hand later in this game, but if you pay attention to dialogue, achievement lists in particular online, and the behaviour of certain characters, they may not always take you completely by surprise. Drinking will be the death of you. Damn right. Is there any wine left? For all my raving about the wonders of this game, though, it is certainly not without its problems. <sighs> Nothing's ever easy. Kingdom Come Deliverance, like so many sprawling open-world RPGs, was plagued by bugs upon release, and odd problems persist, but nowhere more so than on consoles. And if my limited online research into the resolution for these problems is anything to go by, no console was more problematic than the Xbox One the most asthmatic of the platforms mentioned, and unfortunately the only one available to me at the time of the game's release. 
This isn't to say the others didn't suffer, but it seems to me that after all the patches came in, the Xbox One players were the ones most commonly complaining about persistent difficulties. Some of these were mild annoyances, like NPCs walking through objects and each other, and horses. Some were downright hilarious, like Henry suddenly shooting up into the air whilst at an alchemy bench. Whereupon he just keeps going up and up above the sprawling land of Bohemia as though he was being raptured by the baby Jesus. But the worst of them, by far, was the infamous halberd bug. Halberds were never implemented properly in this game from the very start. I picked one up from a bandit early on in my first playthrough because the menu showed it was worth 1,000 groschen, which is the game's currency. But once picked up, you can't put it away, you can't sell it, you can't put it on your horse, and everywhere you go, people complain or just scream and run because you're carrying a very large and completely useless pointy pole. The halberd bug I'm speaking of, though, caused halberds to randomly spawn in places where guards had been. But then they never despawned, and the game seemed to keep track of them at all times wherever they were in the world, causing an insanely glitchy, juddering play experience. And even after the latest patch, which is 1.4.3 at the time of recording, many of us were advised by Warhorse that if you got the problem before the patch release, then the only way to get rid of it was to go back to a safe point before it started happening. Well, firstly, when the f*** was that? I didn't go around counting halberds in the dirt in case of later difficulties. And secondly, that's not so easy when the problem arises 40 plus hours into your YouTube walkthrough series, which already takes pretty much all of your free time, and YouTube are breathing down your neck to maintain a regular schedule, as all of us YouTubers know. On top of this, it really seems to me as though this game should never have been released on the Xbox One. And that's quite an indictment considering how much I have loved this game, and that the Xbox One is currently my only way to play and record video games. So I would never have had the pleasure of Henry's company had it not been available to Xbox One players. But it seems to me as though the old Xbox One was just not up to the job. Even after all the patches and delays and more patches, texture maps often seem to load with all the haste of an overweight snail crossing a field of broken glass to keep a particularly painful dentist appointment in the heart of song thrush territory. Kingdom Come Deliverance is a game offering a rich and diverse landscape, steeped in history, with truly believable characters and sold on the back of its attention to realistic detail. So when you regularly encounter scenes like headless thugs and men with see-through torsos demanding money while standing on an invisible drawbridge in front of a castle that looks like it was drawn on a cereal box in crayon, it really is not doing what it said on the tin. The textures catch up eventually, but you have to go through all the stages of loading, including the bit where their head appears but looks like Odo from Deep Space Nine. And by the time they start to look like normal people, you've either moved on to the next shop or stabbed them in their invisible faces and taken all their textureless clothes. This is the first game from developer Warhorse Studios. They have some experienced players on their team, but it is a brand new company trying to do something genuinely fresh and new. We gamers appreciate that sort of thing, particularly RPG gamers. So there was a lot of goodwill and forgiveness for mistakes that must be easy to make on your first lap around the block. God knows I wouldn't want to try doing what they just did. And the fact that they came so close to providing a perfect, truly immersive role-playing experience has given us a lot of real hope for the potential future of this new company. But delays, animations that would have looked dated in a 90s game, and bugs and glitches that would make even Bethesda blush have used up almost their entire currency reserve as far as goodwill is concerned, and RPG gamers expect them to do a lot better next time. When all the talk of textureless trees and embarrassingly clunky animation is forgotten for just a moment though, what Warhorse have produced here is a thing of real beauty. I'm in my 40s now, and I've been an avid gamer since the days of Jet Set Willy, Frogger and Hungry Horace, but my love of movies is hard to beat. Okay. And only when I had completed Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption in 2010 did I first say, immersive video games with music, story and character that good really could someday hammer the nails into the coffin lid of the movie industry. Since 2010 I have seen other games come close, but none quite so close as Kingdom Come Deliverance. For an RPG series to live long, it must be built on a solid foundation. It doesn't matter if the doors are falling off the hinges and the roof leaks, all those things can be fixed as long as it has a strong heart, 
and Kingdom Come Deliverance has the heart of a rhino. Warhorse have done a stellar job, in my opinion, concentrating on those things that go overlooked by too many RPG games in favour of flawless graphics and a game map the size of a small moon. I have been a writer, a reader, a movie fan and a gamer all my life. I'm a professional voiceover artist nowadays, reading for a living and indulging myself with stories in all forms when I have free time, so I'm pretty confident that I know a good storyteller when I see one. And Kingdom Come Deliverance director and lead writer Daniel Vavre is just such a person. Four things really draw you into a game, a movie or a TV series more than anything else. Kingdom Come Deliverance hits all these points with precision. Bloody hell, that's a lot. All right, one thing at a time. The story is fantastic and often takes you in a different direction than that you might have been expecting. The voice acting, for the most part, is brilliant. There are a few hiccups here and there. Lady Stephanie of Talmberg is a prime example. I'm sorry about that, whoever voiced Lady Stephanie. But the principal players deliver well within the confines of their character. Take it from me, it's no easy thing to step into a box and jump into a character when there is often no one else in the room to react to. A fantastic score by Jan Walter and Adam Sporka really adds that extra rise and fall to moments of importance. My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robard. And lastly, character. I spoke at length about Henry and Hans Capon earlier, but Henry really is the linchpin in all of this. Without him, the whole thing just falls apart. And Henry of Scalitz is the most interesting character I've ever played as, I think. And it is precisely his ordinariness that makes him so likeable, so relatable. He is not heralded as the greatest archer or swordsman in the land. Nobody knows his name. Jesus Christ, who are you and what are you doing here? His reputation does not precede him. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz. He isn't ruggedly handsome or drop-dead gorgeous. He isn't some jaded dragon slayer or sorcerer coming out of retirement for one last mission. He doesn't have rippling abs or biceps you're afraid to get too close to for fear they might explode in your face. And he has a perfectly ordinary Midlands accent. Do you have to sneak up on me like thieves? A little odd to find yeah, in 15th thieves. century Bohemia, along with Yorkshiremen, Aussies and Americans, all speaking perfect English, of course, but not all that unusual for Tom Mackay, who is the voice behind Henry, who comes from Solly Hull. I cannot tell you how many times I've been put off a main character, <coughs> Geralt of Rivia, <coughs> because he opens his mouth and out comes the voice of Batman. Please stop doing this, game developers. It's really, really irritating once you get past the age of 12. I thoroughly enjoyed becoming Henry of Scalitz and was genuinely sad when the game came to an end. But that end was a very Empire Strikes Back Mass Effect 2 style ending and Warhorse have left us in very little doubt that Henry's story is far from over. I for one cannot wait to see what's next from this young game studio, but wherever they take us next let's just hope it's fully rendered. Let's get to it. Kingdom Come Deliverance is available on PC, PS4, Xbox One X and Xbox One. If you haven't played it yet and you're thinking about where to go for your next game, I highly recommend it. Not quite so much on the Xbox One platform, as I just mentioned, for all the reasons I just mentioned, but certainly on PC if you haven't got it already. And from everything I've read, PS4 actually holds up quite well as well, and Xbox One X is supposed to be a superb way to play this game. But that's it for this review. If you want more game reviews, more game walkthroughs, more trailer reactions, more tips and tricks, and video game content of all sorts, subscribe, like, comment. All these things are really, really important. Share this video, this review, with whoever else you think that might like it, and keep watching. From Night's Arcade, this is Sleepless Night, saying nighty-night.